Absolutely. Yeah, and let me ask you a question. What was that feeling, man? Because there's a lot of young cats out here that think the street life is all that. I remember everybody seen it when you was walking to court when you was a young cat. You going in there, you and Shug and them. What was that feeling, man? Because you described that feeling to these young cats. It wasn't. You know, it, was, was it wasn't nice. It wasn't. Uh, we talking about murder. When was you case. when you fighting for your life, when you fighting a murder case, and you in the judicial system. First of all, you you the system designed to beat you anyway. So if you go in there, you know, with a one eight seven, most likely you are gonna lose. So my heart was was beating every day. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how to carry myself. I didn't know how to act because I wasn't ever in a position like that. Normally, when I went to court, I would just take the deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have money for a lawyer. I didn't have. Yeah, that, that was me. I was dead. Right, right. So, nigga didn't have none of that. So, this is the first time I ever had a lawyer. I ever had somebody speak for me to where I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't do nothing. I had to let the lawyer speak and just sit in court and just be on my best behavior. But at the same time, it was shit happening outside of court that was still going down that was, you know, prohibiting me from moving. I had to be on house arrest. I had to. Couldn't move certain ways, couldn't do certain things, but it it taught me discipline. You know what I'm saying? In a real crazy way, it taught me discipline because everybody around me was running wild, and I was the only one that couldn't. Let me ask you a question. Suge Knight, did that man change your life forever? He changed my life forever. Suge Knight was one of the best niggas that I ever ran across in my life for the simple fact that he was so honest, so real, so true, and so passionate about death row and about his artists and about us becoming who we are. And, you know, I like to reflect on the great shit that he did. You know, everybody know about the bad shit, but the great shit he did was he instilled in me the, the power and the will to just be great and just to stand on top of it and not to be second place but be first place. And, you know, when you got somebody like that, before he became <clears throat> the mogul that y'all seen, behind the scenes, we seen that mogul. We seen him, you know, giving us information, direction, you know, coaching us. Like, even when he came to my murder case, if it wasn't for him, I don't know what I would have did because he was professional enough to know that you need a lawyer. We got to get a defense team. We got to do this. Don't say a word. How much did your lawyer cost? Man, we spent about $10 million on that case. Damn. Just to get you out. He spent $10 million cash. At least because the case went on for three years. And y'all had the best lawyer you could get. We had David Kenner, and then he brought in Johnny Cochran, and then he brought in Donald Ray, and then they brought in uh, another attorney. It was like I had like five or six attorneys on it. They, was, they had a... A, a, a detective, a pathologist, a, a, a DNA, a, a video, like every every level of the game. It was like this is, was the first time that video reenactments was introduced in court. So we had to reenact what had actually happened through a video that my attorney was willing to had you know found a way to put together. So it was like a reenactment, like you see now when you watch those right, shows, absolutely. the first forty eight and all absolutely. that shit. You see them how they we was the first ones to do that in court. And that shit was because the money we were spending and this lawyer was so sharp. He was like, I got to let people see because the way they see you, they see you as just a gangbanger that did a drive-by. So we got to show them exactly what happened so they can be inside the seat and see exactly what took place. Let me ask you this. Uh, Shug, you still talk to Shug? Yeah, I spoke with him about <clears throat> about two months ago. Um, How you doing? He doing good. He doing better than he was before. Um, he's got a good spirit. and. That's um good. I just wanted to communicate with him just to keep the love and let him know that I'm going to keep his spirit alive. And if, you know, the grace of God, if death row happens to get, you know, dropped in my hands or open back up again, I'll be willing to keep the spirit of it alive and just do my thing. That's why I'm representing, you know what I'm saying, for the spirit of, because I remember that's my birthplace. That's my start. That's my Absolute. ecosystem. That was one of the first people to believe in you. Exactly. You better know it. One thing so, I, 